Let's go to Andrew Oak. He is a First Lady documentarian, author of Unusual for Their Time on the Road with America's First Ladies, Volume 1 and 2. He joins us from Washington. Thanks for your time. Oh, thank you for having me here. Did you ever have a chance to meet Barbara Bush? No, I've met a number of people in the family and worked with them throughout my travels and research. But I remember her time uh, as a child when uh, her husband was in office as vice president and president. And she's been so many things to so many people that you almost feel like you know this woman. All of us do. And that's part of the legacy that she leaves behind. So many to, to so many things to so many people. Tell me about that. Well, you know, you mentioned that George H.W. Bush was by her side in her final moments. That's no surprise. The two were together for a majority of their life. Barbara, Barbara Bush has been scrapbooking since she and H.W. started dating in the 40s. There's literally thousands of pictures in thousands of pages in 50, 60, 70 some odd uh, scrapbooks that they keep at the museum in College Station, Texas, at the library, uh, Bush Library Museum. I've perused those scrapbooks. I've been able to see these pictures. And I feel as though I know this woman so intimately because think if someone looked in your photo album, the type of pictures they would see, holidays, birthdays, celebrations, uh, family time uh, around the, the, the Thanksgiving dinner table, wearing Christmas sweaters, things like that. She was a wonderful first lady that had a great separation of personal and professional. All right, so let me ask you what made her stand out from the rest in the sense of what did she bring to her position as First Lady uh, that was different from others? She was humble. She did everything with a quiet grace and style, which made her more effective. She also had a self-deprecating sense of humor. You know, she mentioned, you mentioned uh, that her pearls were not real. But the reason she wore the pearls, and she was open about this, she didn't like the way her neck looked. Uh, <laughs> uh, she was told one time that someone had said she's not the most attractive first lady, and she said she's not a bad-looking lady. She said she just didn't dress very well. So when she didn't take herself too seriously, it allowed her to take her causes very seriously. Her literacy campaign, the work that she did in the numerous memorial hospitals across the country with her name on it. Uh, she's one of the most productive post-White House first ladies in all of history. All of this while keeping her family together and being the matriarch of one of the biggest political dynasties in our country's history. So let me ask you, Andrew, did you learn anything about her through your research that most of us would not know about her? I did. One of her favorite times in life was exemplified in one of her photo albums from China. She was over there during a very unique time in the Bush's life. It was a time when their children were old enough to take care of themselves, but not off on their own in their political careers and need the help of the family that she would later provide. So this was the only time in the Barbara Bush and H.W.'s life when they could truly be together as a couple. And they were, and they enjoyed their time in China immensely. And the pictures show two people in love, two best friends, two partners going all over the country, the, Ber the, 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 the Great Wall in Beijing riding bicycles, having tea parties and going to social events and getting to know the Chinese people, which was in exactly their job over there as ambassadors of the United States. Andrew Oak, I've got to leave it there, but thank you for joining us on the program today. Thank you.